Hello, Aldo Figueroa here. In this video, I want to go over some of the different uh, tools and options we have when creating joints. In a previous video, um, there's a video that goes over how to create joints. Um, but the creation of joints is rather simple. Uh, I'm here in Maya. I'm going to switch to the front view for right now. So I'm going to move my cursor down here in the bottom left-hand corner, press the space bar. And I'm already in the rigging modeling, uh, the rigging menu set. And we're here under skeleton. I'm gonna go ahead and tear off this menu item. So we have this window right here. And what I wanna do to create joints, uh, we could go over here to use this tool uh, and this option bar, option box. I'm just gonna go ahead and reset the tool. Just get to the default settings. And now when we use a create joints, uh, you basically just use your mouse and wherever you're at, if you click, you're putting down a joint. And whenever you click again, you're creating a second joint and there's a bone that connects from the first joint to the, to the second one. If you click and drag, you're able to change the placement wherever you want that joint. Once you let go though, you, you cannot move it but to change it, if you hover over it and use the middle mouse button, you're able to click and rechange the position. Now, one note, one thing to note is that if you do so, uh, you may need to reorient the joint. And I'll show you in a moment. I'm just going to go ahead and click right here. And I'm just going to press enter. And here we just created this joint. But if you'll notice that the second joint right here, I'm going to switch to the, uh, my tool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and double click the move tool. And by doing so in this options, I want to change the orient uh, axis orientation from world to object. And you see that when I click on the first one, because my joint orientations, it's set to X, X is always going to point to the second joint. But if you can see this one right here, it's pointing off to the side because initially it was, the joint was down here, but I moved it. And if I go over here and see this one's fine, uh, it's an easy fix. Uh, to change this, I'm going to go ahead and close this for right now. And you notice within the menu right here, there is this orient joint option box. I'm going to select this. And within these options, I'm just going to go ahead and edit, reset my settings so that the primary axis is X or your secondary Y and secondary world axis right now is set to Y plus. You can see that we want all axes pointing to the next joint. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this and you see this one just churned. So if I click on it now, you can see that it's now going to my next joint. So what I wanted to go over, I wanna go over other things that you're able to do with joints. Like say, for example, what if I want to, let me close this window first. What if I want to now have an additional joint in here? Uh, as I created my chain, I decided that, or I don't have enough joints in here. This is where the insert joints tool comes into play. You select it and anywhere where we have a joint chain, if I click here and now drag, you see that I just added a new joint. Now this one only adds additional joints in between. If I want to change them, I need to, I could either go to my move tool, but this time what I want to do, just like if I'm changing the pivot point, you press and hold down D or you just press and hold D. And now what you're able to do, you're able to change the placement. So as I'm clicking these, now again, notice how my arrows are going off to the side. If you want to, I go ahead and double click my move tool go into the options, I could go back into the world. And if I want to be able to change this from the world view, I could do that. And now I'm changing these. I'm gonna close this right here. I'm able to change them. Uh, so of course I'm gonna need to reorient, or reorient, reorientate these joints. Now, what I could also do, uh, since we're able to insert joints, we're also able to remove joints. And this mirror joints and orient joints, uh, where I showed you the orient joints, I'll go over the mirror joints in a moment. I'm gonna select this joint right here and say, I don't want this one here. Now, we don't wanna press delete. If we press delete, we delete the entire, the entire joint chain. Uh, 
Instead, what I want to do with this one selected, if I tell it to remove joints, click, that joint disappears. I'm going to click on this one, remove it, and it's gone. So and that's how we're able to, if you want to just, we have one too many joints and we've got to want to get rid of them. We could do that too. Uh, but say, for example, what if you want to disconnect it? I want to break this joint right here. I still want it, but I don't want it there anymore. This is where the disconnect joint comes into play. I'm going to go ahead and select the joint that you want, click on this button. And what this has now done, notice that it still looks like it's intact, but what happened is that it adds a new joint down here. It separates them, and now we have this right here. Now, what if I want to connect them? I want these to come back together. So there is this connect joint option. What you're able to do is you select the, the joint that you wanted to start from, and I'm going to select my selection tool, and then I select where I want it to continue. I'm going to go into the option box because there are two options. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to connect joint, and I'm going to go ahead and to apply it. And let's see. Oh, you have to make sure that the right order is selected. I want to select this one. I want to connect it here. Apply. And because connect joint is selected, notice that it moves there. But also notice one little thing is that if I click on this one, or this joint right here, I'm going to switch to my move tool. Notice that there's a copy there. So it did move it into place, but now we have this extra joint. And this joint I no longer need. I could press delete to delete it. And now this joint, this joint chain is now connected. I'm going to undo these steps to take me back here. Or another option is if I connect this one here, if I want to connect them as is, where I just want, I want this basing, but I want to now connect them here. There's different ways that we could do this, but if I go to the connect joint and now switch to parent and apply this, you notice that it now connects a bone in between them. That's one method we could do this. There's actually a couple other methods that we could do this. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now, if we want to connect them using parenting, let me go ahead and create a separate joint chain. Like say, for example, what if I want a new joint chain that goes right here? I don't want to connect those. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to go ahead and create another joint chain that's going to go right here, enter. And when we look at our joint chains, they are a chain. I'm here in my outliner. Right now, they're just labeled joint one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. Now say, for example, this joint chain, joint six, I want to connect it to this one, which is joint two. So what I could do is if I just click on this joint, hold down shift to select the, the joint that I want to connect it, and we could just parent. If we go to edit, and if we select parent or the letter P, the shortcut, I'm going to press P. I just deselect it. I'm going to press P. It connects them. You notice that there is now a little bone right here that connects them, and it continues my joint chain. Or what you could do is instead of uh, parenting, manually parenting, we could also parent them using our outliner. If I click and hold down the middle mouse button on this joint chain, I'm going to go ahead and just expand these just so we can see them. Joint, uh, joint 10, I'm going to click and drag this to middle mouse click and drag this to joint 2. And you can see that they're now connected. If I click on this one, joint 1, notice that this is the parent. From here, everything branches off. At joint two, notice that it branches off into three different joint chains, which are listed right here. Joint five, joint six, and joint 10. Now notice that there's also um, other options down here. There's this reroute skeleton. With reroute skeleton does, now say for example, what if I want this joint, joint two, to be the new root as opposed to joint one? I select that joint, and if I just click right here, reroute skeleton, 
notice that the entire hierarchy changes. Joint two is now at the top. Well, what if I want this joint, which is which in six, seven, eight, joint nine, to be the new root. I go and select it, tell it to reroute skeleton. Now this could be handy if you've created your skeleton, but you realize that the root should be a different joint. You're able to change this. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back to this joint. For example, reroute it and it goes back. So these are some of the options right here. Now I wanna go over the mirror joints. For this one, it does require me to have a little bit of setup. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this entire joint chain. It's gone. And I have a layer right here that is just gives me my, my joints that I have. And what I have, let me go into the perspective just so you can see. Uh, for example, I'm, I was just creating a, this is my, my root, and this is kind of like a spine. Let me go ahead and expand all these different joints, and I've already labeled them. We have root, we have spine one, two, and three. Uh, this is the neck, and the very top would be the head. And over here, uh, because this is going to be the uh, a leg, notice that I have this one is labeled as hip. Then we have the knee. Then we have the ankle right here. And then this would be the toes. But also notice that I have labeled each one with an L for the left, for the left hip, left knee, ankle, and toes, et cetera, et cetera. So what I want to do this time is that I want to mirror this onto the other side but I also want to change the name. As long as you are, have the similar naming conventions, for in this case, I just have the, the L, I first need to connect them. So I have different methods to connect them. I'm just going to parent. I'm going to select this hip, hold down shift to the root, and I'm going to press the letter P and it connects them. And now I can look into my outline and you can see that this L hip is connected to the root. Now, this is where mirror joints come into play. I'm gonna go ahead and select the hip. This is the one that I wanna mirror. I'm gonna go ahead and select the option box. And let me just go ahead and reset my settings. And first, what we need to decide is mirror across. Uh, where here we have these two values, x, y, y, z, or x, z. Now imagine that those two coordinate systems are gonna create a mirror. Now, if I look down here at the bottom left-hand corner, I don't want X and Y because this is gonna create one that goes from basically would be equivalent to front and back. Now the option that I want is Y and Z because I want it to go from Y going up and Z coming forward. And so I want to mirror from the left to the right. The, the other option is X and Z, which would be uh, if equivalent to like from top and bottom. So I'm going to mirror the behavior, but now we also have down here at the bottom uh, replacement names for duplications. I want to search for L, replace that with an R for the right. I'm going to go ahead and select apply. And you could see just like that, I was able to mirror my joints. Now, if you notice close, uh, if you notice that my joint orientations for this, they're going the wrong direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click right here, change this to object. They're pointing the opposite direction. And what I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to uh, orient my joints, option box, apply, and you can see that they're now pointing down to the next one. In fact, if I look closely at all of these, they all look good. And yes, I'm gonna close this window. And you can see this is how you're able to mirror one joint or one joint chain onto the other side. And so if I wanted to create the arms, I could have the arms over here. And as all they're labeled, I can move them onto the other side as well.
So these are some additional tools that I wanted to go over that are not not covered in the other videos uh, that I've made available. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, uh, I hope that you find this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video.